Columbus legacy, the Welsh. Music from the mines. The Welsh and their descendants have been singing in this Minersville, Pennsylvania Congregational Church for 159 years. Today they have gathered for a Gaman Fogani, a hymn singing festival unique to the Welsh. Participants have come from all parts of Pennsylvania, including some who learned to sing here. I learned to sing at the Little Welsh Church in Minersville, the first congregational church, as just a tyke. Uh, we were taught to sing in Sunday school and then Sunday worship service. And we sang in the home and at family gatherings, um, at holidays and uh, birthday parties, and uh, even if we were coming home from a family outing. Most of these Welsh American singers are descended from skilled industrial workers who emigrated from South Wales during the 19th century, most of them during the 1840s and 50s. Although they set up farms in virtually every county of the state, most Welsh went to work in the same industries in Pennsylvania as those that had employed them in Wales. They became slate quarriers in York, Lehigh, and Dauphin counties, or tin plate workers in Lawrence County, but by far the largest number became iron workers and coal miners in the anthracite regions of Luzerne, Lackawanna, and Schuylkill counties. My grandparents uh, came here. I think they were assured that Minersville was certainly a mining town. Um, and um, my grandfather worked in the mines. My father worked in the mines after him and was injured, in fact, when he was in the mines. And of course, as I said earlier, I started in the mines uh, as an underground mine surveyor. And uh, most of our family were traditionally miners. A Welsh immigrant industrialist, David Thomas, perfected the hot blast, which enabled anthracite to be used as a fuel in smelting iron. Ironically, it was his innovation which caused northeastern Pennsylvania to become the largest Welsh settlement in the nation. Along with their industrial skills, the Welsh brought their religion and their music. Their music included a unique tradition of choral singing using four-part harmony, which has been passed on from generation to generation. In my research, I tried to prove, and I think I, I, I did a fairly adequate job of proving it, that harmony, as we know it today, vertical harmony, began in the West Country of Britain. And many people think it started in Wales. Uh, tablatures that exist of 15th, 14th century music show that, that there was this attempt to do things in parts at that point. Very early in Welsh history, singing became the primary way of creating and preserving Welsh identity and language. Isolation in their mountainous homeland and centuries of warfare with the non-Celtic English produced dramatic sagas of great heroes like Arthur of Camelot and the Welsh wizard Merlin. For hundreds of years, these exploits were recounted in prose tales, repeated by poets and sung by bards in the distinctive Welsh language. <laughs> Songs were used not only to recall historical greatness, but also to express feelings and emotions. It was only natural that songs should merge with religious feelings to produce a rich literature of hymns. And religious feelings among the Welsh have always been strong. Although some were Anglicans, most were dissenters and separatists, people who refused to support the established Anglican church and fought for the separation of church and state. In the 17th century, many became Quakers and joined William Penn in his new colony. But by the 19th century, most who came were Calvinist Methodists, later referred to as Welsh Presbyterians, Congregationalists, or Baptists. 
while they may have differed in belief or church structure, all embraced a form of worship that was affected by the great Methodist revival which swept Wales in the 18th century. It was this revival which gave rise to what has been called the Welsh way of life in America. It perfected the will, or spirited sermons chanted in minor keys, made singing even more crucial to Welsh religious expression, and produced the Sunday school movement in order to teach the Welsh to read so they could read the Bible and their hymns. It was the one area where the Welsh language was surviving. For example, my father went to Sunday school to learn to read Welsh because Welsh was forbidden in the schools to be spoken in the schools. As a matter of fact, you were punished if you spoke Welsh in the classroom. The 18th century Methodist revival also gave rise to one of the greatest and most prolific hymn writers in Welsh and English, William Williams. Teaching William's hymns to the average Welshman was easy and inexpensive with the use of the tonic sol fa system. The tonic sol fa system uh, is a way of singing using syllables for the names of pitches. The logic behind using the, the, um, the tonic sol fa system is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, all right? There you go. Now, uh, to buy a piece of written music was expensive. But I can teach you to sing a song by just using my hand and teaching you the syllables to a melody. A, a Welsh coal miner, and we have examples of it, a, a Welshman down in the pit with a piece of chalk writing on coal, syllables for him. like Cum Ronda provide more than joy to the participants at Minersville. The verses from Kim Ronda that I call on frequently uh, in times of need and peril are, guide me, O thou great Jehovah, guide me through this troubled time. And I use that frequently as a source of encouragement and faith and buoyancy. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.